Hi, thank you for taking time to watch this part of the video. I want to take a moment to talk about one of our school goals in the area of mathematics. And it's an area that we set several years ago, several years ago, as a goal to improve our students' ability at doing math calculations. And I'm talking about specifically the four areas of operations, meaning addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We will be sending home to parents soon information about these goals that the information will break out exactly what the goal is by grade level so that if your child's in third grade you'll know what we would expect and what the state of Ohio expects your child will be able to accomplish in the area of math calculation for third grade. And of course you'll find out that that's going to be multiplication, etc. I want to take that to another step though. We're going to be having meetings to talk to parents about our goals and about other uh, programs that we're using to, uh, to help improve the children's learning because that's what it's all about is ultimately the children learning more. And so we have set up three parent meetings. These are evening meetings, all of which start at six and end at seven. And we're going to start on time and we'll try to end on time as well. The three meetings are broken up by grade levels. And the first meeting is going to be on the 13th of February. That's going to be for students who are in grades two and three. It's actually for the parents of children who are in grades two and three. We're going to talk about our goals at that meeting specifically for children in grades two and three. We're also going to talk, there'll be some discussion about the third grade guarantee because that's an exceptionally important um, legislative change that is affecting every child in third grade in the state of Ohio. Uh, the second date is going to be the following Thursday, the 20th, the 20th of February, and that's going to be for children's, children who are in grade four, five, and six, the parents of children in grades four, five, and six. And then the third and last evening meeting will be on Wednesday, the 26th. That meeting is going to be for the parents of children in preschool, kindergarten, and first grade. So to review those once again, the meeting on the 13th is for grades 2 and 3, the meeting on the 20th, grades 4, 5, and 6, and the meeting on the 26th for preschool, kindergarten, and first grade. And the goal for us would be to have every parent possible attend that meeting. You do not need to bring your children and attend that meeting and listen, learn, and ask us questions and see what we can do to help you and what you can do to help us. To that end, let me talk a little bit about the conditions we're in right now. As a result of having, as of the date of this being recorded, we've already had eight snow days, eight weather calamity days, and we've had lots of two-hour delays. Children are missing a lot of instruction. As a result, we're behind in our curricular pace, in our pace of instruction. And our pace of instruction is, a, uh, is very important to us and to your children. We need children to know certain information by the time they finish a particular school year. That's also part of what we're going to talk about at those evening meetings. And so just to share with you right now, if your children happen to be home for a, we'll say a weather day that's coming up or maybe home right now because of bad weather, what would really help your children is you expecting them to do some reading. It could be pleasure reading. It could be a school book. It doesn't have to be a school book. You might know them that many times the children bring home AR books, accelerated reader books. It could be any book, though. It could be a newspaper. As long as the children are reading, they're improving their reading skills. It would certainly help as well if parents were to work with them in that process of reading and enjoying what they're reading with you or you're reading with them, especially the younger the age of the child. We could also benefit your children on those weather days if you were to work with them on their math skills. And the children are, are quick and easy to show what they know 
and in turn, when they start to fail, what they don't know, in other words. So that's where you want to work with them to help them continue to improve their abilities in those four major operations. Again, uh, let me talk further about math, though. We have a new math series in our school district at the elementary level. Many of our grades are now using a new program. It's called My Math. My Math provides a, a workbook for the children, and that workbook is, is, a, is a, what we think is an excellent complement to what the teachers are using to teach a new curriculum in the state of Ohio. We have had for many years standards in the state of Ohio that the teachers used to teach the curriculum. We have had a change in those standards in the state of Ohio and it's a gradual transition from the old standards to what's new and the new is called the Common Core. The new math series that we have, it aligns beautifully with the Common Core. And the teachers also have new equipment in our new building. The teachers received with the My Math materials, they received software that enables them to have on their teacher computer a copy exactly of what the children have in their workbook. And as I observe teachers, I see many times the teachers are using that software on a smart board, only it's actually a simple old whiteboard and we have new software that goes with that whiteboard called a Mimeo. Those of you who are teachers might know about that. It enables that plain old whiteboard to become interactive and to work with the teacher or with the students using that to solve math problems. And teachers are using those with the students in their class as they practice skills that they've already learned, which would be called guided practice, as they do the work with themselves at their desk, which would be independent practice, which is also what they're expected to do at home, that's practicing skills they've already learned independently. That doesn't mean that it doesn't sometimes require a little bit of intervention or help by you as parents and, and when, of course, when they're at school by our teachers and our staff. But that software, we have come to believe, and I've not had one teacher not one exception say anything except that it's great, it's a great workbook, it's a great program, great curricular materials to help our children. The one piece that I think we're missing sometimes is a direct uh, cooperative involvement with sharing information more so with parents and that is why we are having, that is why we are having our three parent meetings to talk to you about our curriculum and also talk about the programs we're using and not just math but also in reading. And I could go on and go on and talk about that but what I'm going to ask is that if you have a child in those grades make this important because ultimately you're always going to be your child's number one teacher and we have them for a few hours a day and that's very important and what we do is try to use that time as efficiently as possible. But now that we've lost a lot of time because of weather delays and because we have very challenging standards to meet, we're asking that parents come to those meetings, talk to us, find out what we can do to help you and in turn what you can do to help us because ultimately it all is going to help the students, your children.